Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Niche Pursuits News. I'm with Jared here. We're excited to cover the news in the SEO and content publishing industry, along with a couple of other our side projects that we're working on. Uh, and then finally, at the end, we're going to talk about a couple of weird niche sites that we have. Um, you know, I'm feeling like mine's a, almost a throwaway week. I Oh. I feel kind of bad. Like, uh, it's, is this is this fit? Is it worth talking about? But here it is. It's a weird niche site. So. We, I had a peek. They're both along the whimsical lines. I'll tell everyone that. So we're gonna yes. have some fun today with our weird niches. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. You know. So stick around. It, it will be fun. <laughs> will you be inspired? You Probably know, not. maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but there is uh, some news. I. I don't know if it's a heavy news week per se. It, it doesn't feel like anything drastically is changing. Well, last week was but, pretty heavy too. So on the back of that, there's probably also yes. a feeling of, yeah, last week was a lot of stuff. There was. There was a lot of stuff last week. And, you know, there there's a lot of, it almost feels like chess moves, right? You know, somebody's moving a pawn here and there. Uh, no checkmate news here uh, or anything like that. But we got a couple pawn moves that, hey, could lead to something big. Hey everyone, Spencer here, founder of Niche Pursuits. So you probably know the importance of building internal links so your site can perform well in Google. Today I wanna to share how Link Whisper can help you add outbound internal links to your articles. As you draft your article in WordPress, Link Whisper scans your site, identifying the best internal link opportunities. It then recommends the perfect anchor text and link to add. With just a click, your content is updated with new internal links. No more expensive tools or tedious manual site searches. Link Whisper does the heavy lifting right inside the WordPress editor. Say goodbye to the hassle of internal linking. With Link Whisper, you can focus on what you do best, creating great content. Use the coupon code podcast today and get $15 off. Elevate your website's internal linking with Link Whisper now. Building smart internal links just got easier. Go to linkwhisper.com today and be sure to use coupon code podcast to get fifteen dollars off. Um, so first, let's start off with uh, Google Bard. You know, um, we've talked about that, of course, uh, quite a bit. So there is, I, I guess, it's a leak. It's not necessarily official, uh, but it sounds like it's most likely happening uh, very soon. Maybe even by the time this podcast is released, that Google is rebranding Bard to Gemini. Um. And uh, so, I mean, this has been covered all over the place. It, it was uh, a developer found this on um, and, and shared it on Twitter. They just sort of saw in the, uh, oh, where did they see that? Change in, log. In, the change in the log change says, log. let's see, Google has evolved Thank the UI you. to reduce visual distractions and blah, 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 stuff that's in the article. Yeah, basically what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. So in their change log, it was sort of said, but Google hasn't officially announced this. Uh, but I, I think it's, a great change. I mean, when I personally think of the name Google Bard, I don't know. I, I just, I don't get visions. Of, it doesn't connote like intelligence and new and fresh. It feels like an old word. I don't know. Bard feels, just feels kind of. It's better than, uh, it's better than Grok. <laughs> I and, agree to, with that. To Twitter, to Twitter, the X, Twitter uh, AI, AI mm -hmm, platform. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not great still. Yeah, it just isn't great. And, you know, um, I, I've read the history and, you know, there's some reasons they named it Bard or whatever. But Gemini feels like an intelligent word. It feels cutting edge. It feels kind of modern-ish, right? Like very tech wasn't, feeling um, word. Wasn't the name of one of the space programs, you know, like discovery and pursuit of, of new things. And, you know, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, you know. If if I were in the boardroom making decisions with Google there and the CEO, I would have said for sure, let's let's go with the name change to uh, to Gemini. Uh, so yeah, it, it's expected to happen. Um, I think Jared, you said you just pulled up Google Bard. It hasn't happened yet, uh, yet. but uh, we're recording though prior soon. to this uh, podcast going live. So when you listen to this over the weekend, it could very well be likely. Someone uh, in the article, it said that the change log was for was noted for February 7th. So in theory, it should be live by now, but these things can change. So who knows? Yeah. Yep. Well, very good. So uh, we will maybe leave it at that. Just kind of an announcement. Hey, uh, Google is is changing the name. But I guess the under, undertone of this that, that we talked about, I think it was last week, just they're putting a lot of effort and energy behind um, 
you know, Gemini and Bard, right? They're kind of building out these AI tools. And this feels like this, they're trying to make this one of their flagship uh, products. So a couple um, things I just thought I quickly highlight that I, I thought were really bigger than the ch name change in terms of capabilities. Number one is they're planning on apparently releasing a voice chat component. Uh, that, that would be cool if it played itself out nicely. And then also they're looking at releasing Gemini Advanced, which is a paid plan comparable or to compete with chat GPT plus. I think we've had that in the news a couple of weeks ago. Doesn't yeah. sound new, but uh, you know, more competition is good. I know a lot of people have been having better luck with Bard these days than chat GPT as a, as a chat bot. Uh, certainly mm -hmm. Spencer, you have not been having good luck with Bard, but That's your right. situation's notwithstanding. So that'll be good, you know, to see some of these, uh, uh, I use chat GPT plus a lot. So seeing the advanced version will be great. Yeah, no, I agree. It, uh, any new advancements, and um, Gemini has been, or Bard, right, has, has been free, right? It sounds like they're going to have a premium version, but a great free tool that people can uh, continue to use under a new name. Yeah, with some maybe new features, the, the voice uh, assisted and um, other premium features. So we'll keep an eye on that uh, as it progresses. Um, the other big news story this week is that Google made an update to their SEO starter guide. Um, and so they've had an SEO starter guide for a long time, going back to uh, 2008 is what it says here in the article. It was originally a 22 page PDF, right? But they've you know tweaked it over the years. Um, they added some things and they removed some things. It, it sounded like mostly it was condensing a lot of it. Um, they, they removed a lot of fluff, I guess I should say, and compressed a lot of sections um, with the overall guidance that this truly is a starter guide. This is meant for beginners. This isn't meant for advanced SEO tactics. Um, so if you're looking for real meat and something that's, you know, something that maybe you haven't heard about, like you're not going to find it in the SEO starter guide. But I think there is some interesting insights uh, into some of the changes they made, some of the things that they point out within the SEO starter guide that really should just be basic knowledge and guidance that we should all use when building a website. So um, yeah, so th they go over what they added, what they changed. Um, you know, like I said, they, they compressed a lot of, uh, sections mostly because they felt like some was more advanced than what was needed in the starter guide. Um, and then they, they added some new sections on different things. So if we take a look at this, um, I had just a couple of, um, you know, things that I thought were interesting. Um, mostly surrounding what you should, uh, not focus on. Right. So they have a sec, an entire section here. That's exactly where I went to. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, things we believe you shouldn't focus on. Yep. Right. Uh, and I sense that they include this because of the SEO community, right? There's so many people giving advice. SEOs are saying, do this, do that. And for whatever reason, Google has latched onto some of that and say, don't focus too much on these things, right? So things like meta keywords, keyword stuffing, keywords in the domain or the oh. URL path. EMDs um, are out now. Is that what you're telling me? EMDs are out, man. The you know 2013 version of me is is hurt uh, about, by this. Can we still do PMDs? You can you can do them. <laughs> I'm kidding. I won't, Will it help? I won't ask you questions about every single one of these. I promise. <laughs> But, uh, you know, um, one, one that I thought was, uh, somewhat interesting minimum or maximum content length, right? The long length of content doesn't matter. Um, there's no magical word count. It says though you should probably want to have at least one word. Uh, yes. Look at Google getting a sense of humor here. Come on now. Yeah. Come on yeah. now. Um, we'll clap for that one. Yeah. It, it does say that you should, um, if you're varying your words, right, like semantic keywords, um, writing naturally to not be repetitive, you have more chances to show up in search simply because you are using more keywords. Okay, so that's, you know, that's kind of interesting. Um, was there anything else that you found 
uh, kind of interesting on some of these here. I mean, I, I, I did for all of those of you listening, I get, didn't go back and look at what it was before and all that. And, and so I admit, I don't, I haven't paid attention to this starter guy in a long time, but I, I mean, I just, I thought it was interesting in this section, they talk about page rank. Like I, I, I don't remember Google hmm. like talking about page rank for a long time now. Obviously we knew 10 plus years ago, page rank was, was shared with us. We actually get a score. Like what was it? One through 10. Yep. Um, on our page mm-hmm. rank and it was dynamic because you could like watch that sucker go up or down and you knew your rankings were entirely dependent on that and i know they sunsetted it away from showing us that but i also thought they right. kind of moved away from talking about it so i don't know i thought it was interesting it's like they're basically saying hey page rank is here and it uses links and it's one of the fundamental algorithms at google it's like oh I, we've all yes. known that but i i don't know is that is that the first time you've seen it in print in a while or is it just me maybe so i mean i haven't been I've researching been so you know but but I agree that, you know, it's not something that you've heard Google talk about in a long time. Yeah. Uh, in many years, they kind of went through a big PR campaign. I don't know what year it was where they, you know, sort of removed it from being publicly totally. used and mentioned. Right. And um, but yeah, here they are mentioning it. Um, it it's a fascinating history. Um, fun fact. Page rank is not named page rank because of a website having pages, but it's actually named after Larry Page. So it's his last name, Page Rank. He was the one that created it. Um, it's it's kind of like the original yeah, it's, ranking factor. I mean, it is right? what made based Google on successful, links. basically, right? Yeah. Like it's what made Google better than Yahoo at the time. Exactly, exactly. And it, it was all based on links then. Um, and so it's still like very core to their algorithm. And they just, they say, don't focus on it, right? Um, there's a lot more to Google search than just links. Um, page rank is just one of those, right? But it is still a, a ranking factor. Um, okay. Duplicate content, number and order of headings. Uh, and then speaking of ranking factors, uh, oh, thinking E E A T is a ranking factor. No, it's not. <laughs> I, I kind of no, love that if, if, if I'm honest, right. It's just like this short, and very direct answer of if you think EEAT is a ranking factor, no, it's not. Period. I'm still uh, bothered that, by the suggestion. Yeah, they're they're a little bit bothered by it. And then of course you can open up their um, EEAT, you know, factors. Um, it's really more based on what they give quality raters, right? These are these guidelines. They look at the EEAT to sort of say if the website is somebody that is demonstrating expertise, authoritative trust, right? Mind you, still living under the hashtag, just EAT. (laughs) Right, yeah. Um, So, I don't know. Is it a ranking factor? No, it's not. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair to them, they've never positioned it as a ranking factor. They, They usually don't do a good job clearly explaining stuff in the first place, so... Given that this is a starter guide, perhaps people beginning in SEO could be remiss for or be forgiven for thinking it could be a ranking factor given how much it's talked about. So I see both sides. Yeah. Um, So one of my favorite parts here of the the SEO starter guide, um, I'll I'll just read this paragraph. And this has gotten tons of shares and retweets and comments sort of poking fun. Uh, at Google for this. So I'll just read the paragraph. It says, it's under their marketing, uh, promoting your website section. It says, putting effort into the offline promotion of your company or site can also be rewarding. For example, if you have a business site, make sure its URL is listed on your business cards, letterhead, posters, and other materials. With their permission, you could also send out recurring newsletters to your audience, letting them know uh, about new content on your website. Right. So be sure to include your your website URL on business cards, letterhead, et cetera, uh, on the SEO starter guide. Right. Is kind of funny. And then, of course, Cyrus uh, Shepard here says Google's uh, I will share that screen. Uh, Google's new SEO starter guide. Don't focus on page rank and links. Instead, put your URL on business cards and posters. Um, I, Anyways, hilarious tweet that. Uh, There's been many variations of this being shared on Twitter throughout the week that um, just saw a huge spike in my traffic thanks to all the business cards I recently handed out or et cetera, right? Now I'm ranking number one because I just, you know, I handed out a bunch of business cards. 
I, it's yeah, it's um, I again, I see both sides. Like, there, you know, this is kind of underpinning a lot of what we've seen with the HCU, right? Like, a lot of people will say, like, oh, it looks like, uh, and Spencer, you've shared it this week, so I can throw it right back at you. Like, direct traffic seems to be a positive signal for Google. Mm-hmm. If you put your name on a business card, they can't click on it, so they're gonna have to take that business card and type the URL in. That's t- so I see that they're in many ways trying to tell us perhaps some of the things that they're factoring in now. Thank you for that. But it's just too easy for us to all have fun with. <laughs> right. Exactly. And for an SEO, like the concept of direct traffic is a little bit more complicated than the nuanced approach of just put your, you know, business name on a uh, URL on a business card and stuff. So it's too much fun. It, it just, you know, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I I agree with you. I think there's kind of a nugget of wisdom there is yeah. that whatever you can do to get people to go directly to your website, I mean, it's really just about building a real brand, right? Yeah. So that people recognize you of, hey, I'm going to go to this website because I, I trust them whether or not I actually saw it on a business card, right, is really not the main thing here. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree that perhaps Google is t- kind of telling us or hinting that, hey, if people are coming directly to your website, if they're typing in your URL, if they're visiting your site from other places than just search, like that's a good thing just for business, but also potentially for search itself. Totally. Um, and it is a good thing, you know, and, um, yeah. you know, that is a good thing. I think just, uh, plus it's an archaic, right? Like who, do you have business cards, Spencer? Like, do you have any? I might have some that I printed in like 2015 or Mr. something. Mr. Print style there. Oh yeah, Vista Print went to a business conference, ready, ready to hand some out. Ready but, to hand those suckers out, right? I have never made a business card for Two One Creative. I can count on one hand the number of times I've kind of felt like I needed one. I mean, so it's a bit archaic, and um, it's a bit archaic in that. I think that's also some of what people are having fun with, you know? Yeah. Yep. I mean, not from a high level. I don't know. I just thought from the whole SEO starter guide that Google published. Like, I just can't be. I can't help myself. Like the last six months, it's been from Google. It's been all about. Don't write for SEO, write for humans. Mm-hmm. And then now we're getting an SEO starter guide released to us on how to do SEO better. I just, I, it just, it, it's very difficult to get your mind around from a PR standpoint. Yeah, um, I agree. And, you know, a lot of the things that they share in the SEO starter guide is very specific to like targeting keywords, right? Like, um, you have more chances to show up in search because you are using more keywords. Right. It kind of tells you very SEO things. Right. Um, so I don't know. They, they tiptoe, they do the dance, they do the best to not tell us to write for search engines while giving us hints for what you need to do to write for search engines. Um, so I agree. I see it. It's kind of ironic. Um, all right. Maybe let's move on to our final news story of the day here. Uh, before we jump into our shiny object uh, shenanigans. Uh, and this one is also like, it could be big news or it could just not be. Um, time will tell on this one. But uh, the headline here is Google cannot proceed with third party deprecation. Um, so, uh, cookie the deprecation. UK, third party cookie uh, deprecation. Thir- third party cookie deprecation. Thank you. Um, cookies is the important part there. Um, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority uh, has some concerns over their privacy sandbox. I guess these are changes that Google has been making to meet the new um, the new guidelines um, to make sure that privacy across you know browsers and users uh, and advertisers is happening. And so uh, this um, yeah UK organization had some concerns in saying you know you need to make some changes before you're able to implement this. Uh, and so the I guess the news story is that potentially the third party you know losing the third party cookie could get pushed back a little bit if Google is not able to meet these guidelines in time. But the goal overall was uh, uh, by the end of quarter two I think or the second half of 2024. Uh, and so they still have several months. And I know that uh, a Google search liaison responded to search engine land and said, uh, we continue to move forward with our plans to phase out third party cookie cookies in H2 2024, subject to addressing any remaining concerns from the UK CMA. 
We are confident the industry can make the transition in 2024 based on all the tremendous progress we've seen from leading companies. What's H2 20, 2024? Could that be a typo? I'm wondering if it, well, I'm wondering if it's half two. Halfway through 2024? H, like, yeah, like, like half, like, uh, I get, I'm guessing, but yeah, I'm I'm guessing maybe, like the start of I have to admit quarter like, when three. When I'm typing, I type H two so often because I'm an, I'm an SEO. Maybe you know the the, the writer was just you know in SEO mode. <laughs> yeah, they just wrote the starter guide and now they're writing. Yeah. writing yeah, we this. did a news story a couple of weeks ago. I think at the end of December, where we I, I think they said it was latter 2024. So um, this is the yeah. first we're hearing about concerns with the third party de you know, cookie depreciation, right? Right, exactly. And, and and this is big news because, uh, for those that don't remember, uh, because this could impact um, advertisers in a lot of ways, but publishers yeah. potentially earning less um, from like display ads. If if advertisers can't really use the, the same data that they used before, they may not know how much to bid. And so they might bid lower on advertising. We really don't know. Um, but certainly, I mean, Google is going to do everything in their power because uh, I think we use the phrase, this is their golden goose, right? Like advertising. And so they want to make sure advertisers are willing to spend as much as possible. And so I'm confident we're not going to see a huge impact on RPMs, uh, but we really don't know. And so that that's why this is a big story. And if it gets pushed back further and further, like I'm good with business as usual, you know, less change is, is always nice. Um, so it sounds like we got another six months or so before anything real could get implemented. I don't think, uh, publishers will be disappointed to hear that. Right. Exactly. So if you're on Mediavine, Raptive, Ezoic, like there's really nothing you need to do for the next several months, right? Till the second half of the year. Uh, and then maybe potentially there will be something you need to do, but we'll keep you posted. So keep listening in uh, to the podcast here, of course. Um, I think that wraps up the uh, news stories that we had for the day. Um, but we've got a couple of side hustles that, that we want to chat about, and maybe I'll just go ahead and jump in first. Um, last week, I talked um, how, about how I was building a Facebook page. I was trying to grow the follower count and I was running, um, some likes campaigns, uh, to do that. And, uh, I, I think I shared at the time that I was getting, I had like three campaigns running one at five cents, seven cents, and one at 11 or 12 cents or something yep. like that. Um, well, I'm happy to say it's gotten even cheaper. Um, I started uh, a couple of new, uh, likes campaigns to grow my page and I'm getting even cheaper likes now. And so I had a couple of screenshots, uh, that I was going to share. And, uh, again, the, the end goal is to build up the Facebook page, post content, uh, on, um, on, on the Facebook that leads to my niche website. Right. And then hopefully get a lot of traffic to the niche website. The website makes Ooh. Uh, money from uh, display ads. And so here is my, my best, um, I think it was either the day we recorded or the day after we recorded, um, I was chatting with a buddy and he gave me an idea for a new campaign and I Im implemented it. And that's the one it's getting three cents per follow or like, uh, and it's gotten 3,167 followers, uh, over the past six days. I spent a total of $97 and 10 cents under a so, hundred dollars, under a hundred dollars over 3000 followers in less than a week, right? This, this doesn't have to be crazy expensive. And I even included in this screenshot, the demographics, right? So you can see just the age breakdown of people. You're it's hit pretty, with the older ladies hit with the older ladies. <laughs> Uh, for sure, it's like 54% women and 45% men overall, right? But uh, yeah, the bulk of it is the 55 to 65 uh, <laughs> plus range. Um, I'm starting to think that Facebook like skews that direction anyways, it right? Does. There's not a lot of 18 to no. 30 year olds on Facebook, period. So this is probably not too abnormal. We're, we're probably one of the younger segments on the uh, on the Facebook uh, demographic. Yeah, believe it or not, we don't need to share our age, but <laughs> I'm not in you know those last two categories no, for sure. That's I good can point. tell you we that. Aren't. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And so, uh, so yeah, I'm super happy with, um, I kind of landed on this uh, campaign that's going really well. I've scaled it up now to, um, I think I'm at $20 a day. I just, you know, turned that dial up a day or two ago. And so this should, it, it's doing really well. Um, and then just to give a little bit more information, hopefully people are enjoying this. Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're not enjoying it, I'll just stop sharing all this data. Uh, but it's interesting to me. Um, over the last seven days, this is all my campaigns, right? Which I've had five or six different ads that have run. Um, I've spent $325. I've gotten just over 6,000 likes or just about 6,100 followers uh, from that. I did the math. Uh, it's just a little over five cents per yeah. like. It's like five and a half cents roughly uh, per like, uh, which is excellent. I mean, really anything that's under 10 cents per like, I, I keep that campaign active. Uh, and so this one that's three cents per like is driving the bulk uh, of that uh, overall. And uh, so the question is, well, are all these followers and likes leading to traffic? Right. right. That's the end of the day is I want traffic to my website. Um, and so I have a screenshot of my Google Analytics. Uh, so uh, over the last 30 days is what's showing here. You know, it's got 25,000 page views, my website. Uh, and you can see it's very spiky. I've had two or three just big spikes in traffic, right, where I get three or 4,000 visitors in a single day. Uh, and then it kind of, you know, goes back to maybe a couple hundred a day. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of Facebook that I'm experiencing is that uh, we get a couple of posts that take off. We're posting like three times a day, but it's only a few times a month that something really gets more than like a thousand visitors mm -hmm. right in a single day. Um, and so I would, you know, I would say it's going decent, right? It's not like um, it's not making me rich just yet, uh, but it's fascinating enough that I've been able to build up this page. It's now at um, 51,000 followers overall. Uh, you know, got 25,000 page views in the last 30 days. And as the page grows, and I think I mentioned this last week, that I know I need to double down and just figure out a better formula to have a higher hit rate, right? So we're, we're posting three times a day. I may bump that up to like five times a day, but also try to make them more effective. Right. So instead of two or three big hits a month, we get maybe 10 or so. Right. Uh, then that. So so that's what I really need to do um, here in the next couple of weeks is just dial in the strategy of, OK, which articles really take off, which, you know, Facebook posts really get lots of shares and traffic, et cetera. So I'm going to keep working on that. Uh, but for now, it's growing. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm positive about the future here. So just wanted yeah. to share my little check in. To your point, like it looks like from that graph you have on the screen, it looks like the vast majority of page views do come from when a piece of content goes a little bit viral, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It goes a little bit viral and there's essentially no other traffic. Um, yeah. Like it's, it gets a few clicks from Google, but none of it's really SEO optimized. Right. Um, maybe I'll come prepared with that, but it's, I think it's less than 200 visitors a month, right. From Google yeah, that's not <laughs> itself. Much. It's like all, it's like all Facebook. Like that's, that's the only traffic source. So. Man, I think it's great. I mean, I think obviously all the chatter has been about, you know, a lot of like Facebook and Pinterest and just driving traffic from different sources, newsletters. Uh, we just talked already about direct traffic, right? Like certainly mm -hmm. we're all seeking other channels of, uh, of, of traffic and engagement. And I mean, the fact that you've even been able to get, call it 25,000 page views a month with mm -hmm. a cheap amount of likes, uh, yep. cheap spend on likes and, and like, it almost reminds me of our Amazon influencer stuff that we were doing all last year, where it feels pretty unoptimized. Like you said, like your hit rate isn't very high. And if you increased your hit rate, that's clearly the direct way to grow this traffic along with just getting more uh, followers. Like there's two clear paths, but even out of the gate without a really strong strategic uh, pull behind it, you're, I mean, you're definitely getting waves. Right. Yeah. Uh, up to this point, I'm kind of just, we're, we're throwing a lot of things at the board, right? In terms of the content that we're throwing out there and um, not, 
super strategic about it. It's like, okay, we've got our niche. We know they're interested in this particular thing. And so we're sharing all kinds of news and other articles, right? Um, but dialing into to strategy and seeing, okay, what are other pages doing? What have other successful business owners done specifically on Facebook? Like I very much feel like I'm just learning um, how to make something do really well on Facebook. I am not an expert at all. So this is me on my first attempt. I really do feel like, okay, if I study the best practice strategies, start implementing those, double the amount of right. posts that we're doing and double the size of the Facebook page, right? Hopefully we're at a hundred thousand visitors a month, you know, per, pretty quick after that. So, well, listen. I mean, I don't want to oversell it. We talked about how it would probably take a little consistency at that range, but at 23,000, 25,000 views, 20,000 sessions. So Mediavine looks at sessions. Uh, yep. You're halfway there and yeah. you can then monetize with ads. And all of a sudden, you know, who knows how much, you know, the RPMs in this specific niche will end up paying you. Right. Yep. That's the goal. Get onto Mediavine because it'll pay more than Ezoic. I am on Ezoic because they don't have a traffic, right, um, requirement. And, um, yeah, see where see where it goes from there. So I'll I'll just kind of keep sharing my progress. This is uh, kind of my fun side hustle uh, for now that uh, I'm enjoying, and um, yeah, hopefully it keeps going well. Yeah, congratulations! This is great. Before we jump into the podcast, I wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Search Intelligence. Here's a short clip of Ferry from Search Intelligence showing you how their agency built digital PR links to a client's website. What a crazy campaign. How to sleep on your back. This campaign got us links in Huffington Post, Glamour Magazine, Mirror, and lots of other great news publications. Let me show you how we've done it. It was so simple. Our sleep client provided us with expert commentary about how to train yourself to fall asleep on your back. They also gave advice on why it's best to sleep on your back. Once we've had this information, we went to Muckrack and searched for journalists that consistently write about sleep and well-being. We've sent these journalists the advice provided by the client and within one day the links started flowing in. Glamour Magazine, a DR81 website, picked it up. Huffington Post, DR88, Mirror UK, DR90, a massive avalanche of links blasted through our client's website with this simple yet effective campaign about how to sleep on your back. I hope this inspires and I hope you'll use this technique to land massive links to your or your client's website. If you want similar link building PR campaigns for your website, head to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them now. What are you working on, Jared? Well, I might have shared this. I can't even remember at this point. I believe I might have hinted at it, and that is that the Weekend Growth YouTube channel has become eligible for full monetization. Um, now, uh, just thank you. Yeah. I got a couple stats I'll share with people on, on that. Uh, and remember there's several levels now of monetization with YouTube, right? There's that initial level where you get access to, frankly speaking, a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. You can like have like fans and they can pay you money and all that sort yeah. of stuff. It's like stickers and badges. And I didn't even <laughs> care about that number. That's a, that's like with the 3000 watch hours and, 500 subscribers, I think. The real one, the one that you can put ads on your videos and start seeing monthly checks coming from, from that is at the 1,000 subscriber and 4,000 watch hour period. And I think you have to have three videos upload in the last month or something like that, or last 90 days, whatever it is. I hit that. So um, just some stats on this, because this is a brand new channel that started 284 days ago. So it started in April, I think the end of April. Nice. Um, so less than a year again, as per normal for all of our side hustles, definitely has not been a focus of mine. It's just been something right. that, uh, well, I'll share that here, uh, kind of the stats, but it has, um, at time of recording 2,588 subscribers. It has 4,015 watch hours. So I hit the subscriber number far quicker than I hit the watch hour number. From what I understand, that's pretty common. Um, yeah. unless you're like a video gamer and people just sit there and watch you play for like two hours in a row, like it's a little harder to hit the watch hours when your average video is, you know, getting three minutes of watch time. Right. So, 
um, but did it did break the watch hour. I have a total of 16 videos live and two live videos. So that makes a total of 18 videos. 18 videos in nine months, about two videos a month, right? So that's mm -hmm. my average. I did yep. end up making 33 shorts out of those 18 videos. And that went nowhere. So I don't know if you've had much luck with shorts, but that certainly Not didn't much. go anywhere. That was a waste of time. <laughs> Luckily, it didn't take much time. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get ads on there, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what it starts making. But that's a pretty big milestone in the whole weekend growth. We've talked about the newsletter um, uh, and, and some other things that weekend growth does. But uh, you know, shoot, a year ago I did not have the newsletter, but I also didn't have the YouTube channel. It's another way to kind of earn residual income from these videos. That's a lot of of uh, that's that's a big change from a year ago, right? It didn't even the brand didn't even exist uh, a year ago. So, boy, you were busy in 2023 with the Amazon Influencer Program, <laughs> Weekend Growth, uh, the YouTube channel has done has done well. Um, I'm curious, what's been your most successful video so far? Oh, do you know man. offhand? Uh, offhand, my most successful video is still my low fruits keyword research tutorial. Is that right? Yes. Um, and my link whisper tutorial is in the top five of my videos. All right. Well, more people need to go watch that. I you agree. know, go watch Jared's like uh, link whisper 50 review minutes video. Long. Yeah, it's a deep dive on how to use it. Um, everything you need to know for internal linking. So let's see sort by most viewed and yeah low fruits and then my how to build that's about to break the ten thousand view mark uh that was published eight months ago so that was one of my earlier videos nice. and wow. then my uh how to build topical authority in seo which was published four months ago has 7700 views as well so those are my top two videos that's really good um for a for a new channel less than a year old to have videos getting you know close to ten thousand views even after several months right that's great people would be uh people would love to have that kind of success yeah. i've seen lots of channels that you know they're a couple years old and they're cranking away still not able to kind of hit some of those view numbers so so kudos so Spencer, my number four video is my first 30-day video review of being on amazon influencers all right. So I've heard that has 3,100 views. I've heard of the grapevine you're going to be releasing an Amazon influencer video soon. Yes, you heard uh, from the proper source, it sounds like. <laughs> you might have a head start on me with your 40,000 subscribers or so, but do you think you can beat my 3,100 views? We'll find out. I like this little challenge. I will this accept this bet. challenge. I am not betting. Uh, do I get a handicap on this one or something? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. So I I am releasing, this will be a little teaser ad here. I am releasing a YouTube video on Monday, Monday morning. Oh. I'm doing my full Amazon influencer was, video. That soon. Yeah. Right at, right after we record, I'm actually, I know I got the final edit back. I haven't watched it yet from my editor. So I'm going to watch it. It should be ready to go. I'm going to, you know, get it all prepped and but yes, on Monday, okay. it will be published. I'm going to go over my whole journey over the year. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of good tips and a little a few fun things in there. Clips of a couple of clips of me actually doing reviews. So watch for that. Um, it, anyways, I think it's pretty good. It's turned out well. Um, so go watch that. But, I'll watch that one. I'll watch you that know, one. That'll, Jared will give me one view. Will it get more than... 3300 oh true 4, if i watch views? i'm gonna be actually undermining my yeah. efforts here well if i if i'm over by just one <laughs> you'll you know. give it to me there's my handicap one <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right you and i i'll take away two uh i'll take away two of the views um so. and then uh one more update uh have been working hard at the public speaking goal and i'm proud to announce that i've secured uh, officially my second public speaking spot uh, I've been nice. teasing it because it's been in the works for a while, but it's all done and dusted. So I'll be speaking in Puerto Rico in July at the TBEX conference, which is one of the larger, if not largest, travel blogger conference and expo in the in the world. It bounces around locations all over the country, uh, all over the world. Sorry, um, and this year it's in Puerto Rico in July. Puerto Rico, that's awesome. You know, I know a couple of people. Uh, maybe three people actually that now live in Puerto Rico, hmm. uh, and they they enjoy it. You know, they they were in the U.S., but 
they went to Puerto Rico because they they like it so much there. A lot of reasons, but um, that's cool. So, yeah. uh, do you know what you're speaking on? Do you have to? Did you have to pitch them like, here I'm going to speak on this, or was it more, hey, you knew somebody there and they said, yeah, come on and speak? Uh, I got invited to speak, uh, okay. which is always better, you know, when you're yeah. receiving an, of an invitation. Um, I I gave them two topics based on some back and forth. I think I know which one they're going to pick, but because I haven't actually seen them say what I'm speaking on yet, I won't publicly announce it here. Okay. No <laughs> uh, breaking news the, today. Okay. The niche pursuits audience to cause that uh, to to switch on their part or any part, but I have a pretty good idea. I gave them two different topics that they were um, interested in, and uh, either one will be fine, whichever one they pick. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's a one-hour oh, presentation. Those yeah. are no. That's the downside of all this. If you haven't publicly, if you haven't spoken publicly before. It's it's great when you get accepted and you're like excited about it, and then it's all of a sudden you're like, oh, I have to write this, and it's um it's a lot to put together a one hour talk that's good. So the work is in front of me, but that's part of the gig. That is part of the gig, and you're but you're well practiced, obviously doing the doing the podcast, YouTube channel. You've got a lot of data to pull from, so uh, I'm sure you're going to crush it. Uh, that's good. So I'm halfway well, to my goal. Uh, I got two more I've got to get before the end of the year. I'm feeling pretty good. It's only February. I, I think you're going to hit it. No problems. Uh, you know, if you need help, let, let me know. I want one other travel blog conference actually just came to mind. Uh, it's actually, I think it's called travel con, uh, that is brand new, um, by PT money, Philip Taylor, uh, that also, oh. um, you know, he puts on the, um, uh, financial FinCon. Um, okay. conference that, that I attended, he acquired travel con or decided to start travel con and that's happening. So I have an inside track there. So you do. I don't know if he's looking for speakers or anything, but I should, uh, I should hire is. you as my agent. There you go. Get a little kickback. Yeah. Well, I've, you can get a kickback what? of everything I'm getting paid to speak at this yeah. TVX conference. Mm. Let me tell you, you get free mints and drinks or something. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, you, you don't do it for the money. Let's put it that way. Yeah. No, congrats. Thank so you. Two, two booked, two more to go. Yep. I'm sure you're going to do it. Um, that's exciting. Very and good. To be fair, like it is only February, but remember these these conferences don't they're happening throughout 2024. I got to get in in like they're starting to announce all their speakers. So I am under the gun to get these slots filled because if by October, I, I don't think if I'm down a spot, uh, I'm going to be able to get that at that point. Right. So you got to right. front load these. If your goal is to speak in my case, four times in 2024. Exactly. All right. Well, maybe let's move on to our weird niche sites and, uh, we could have a couple of fun ones like we teased in the Definitely opening here. Yours. Um, yeah, I still, I still feel like, uh, I don't know. It's like we need the the loser sound effect, you know. Like, eh, was this you know was this one you found, or are you in, a, in a, uh, inadvertently making someone feel bad who gave this to you? <clears throat> no, I I found. I mean, I saw it somewhere. Nobody yeah. specifically reached out and said okay. share this, so okay. it's it's Good. on me. It's on me. But I've got my spreadsheet, and I'm it's starting to get thin. Yeah, so kind of. I feel like this is bottom of the barrel, okay. so I apologize. You but gotta carve out still some time to, to to scrape the internet again. I then. do. I do. Um, I need to do that here real quick so uh having said that with that, that exciting build up um <laughs> the the weird niche site is is it friday yet dot net dot net not even the dot com so is it friday yet dot net and you go to it it just tells you nope it's not friday and when it is friday it probably says yep i don't know i'm just guessing this feels um, a lot like that Christmas one. It is exactly like the Christmas <laughs> one. You know, is it Christmas yet? We did it. That's why I feel like, okay, well, uh, you know, uh, it's not super exciting, but it's kind of a fun website. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we are fast approaching within the next month of our one year anniversary of doing these news episodes. Is that right? Wow. I, you know, I feel like everyone gets a week off here or there. You know, you're allowed to have a bad week. You know, uh, I'll I'll let everyone be the judge, right? Is, is well, having, this bad? Having seen this, I'll submit the first vote. And yeah, kind of a yeah, not a, not a great one. A little bit of a you're staring at a white screen with the word nope on it. You don't love it, huh? Now, if this um, if we hadn't had the Christmas one already, I I I'd, 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 I'd have a different opinion, you know. But I I can't argue with you on this. 
And uh, so I will share the stats um, just so I can bury myself even further of how terrible a share this is. Um, but according to AHREF, they get like no traffic, right? They get 218 uh, searches a month. Um, and I guess I didn't even look at what the keywords were, <laughs> but let's see. It's probably, is it Friday yet? There you go. Their number one keyword. Uh, when is it? Who searches when is it Friday? Oh, come on. And is this how real? Could, how, who, how could they not rank number one for is it Friday yet? Who ranks ahead of them? <laughs> That's a good question. Let's find out. Is it Friday yet? Um, well, they, they rank number one. Well, here, I'll share this screen. There's there's images, so maybe ah, that's why there's yeah. images above the image them. Box. But they're but they're the they're the number uh, one result that they can actually secure. Yeah, exactly. I do like um, that it says almost. Um, and again, for those of you listening, I know it's Friday that we release this, but we don't record it on a Friday. So that's right. Yep. And then there is a is it Friday dot org. I didn't visit that one. <laughs> Copycat. Just copycat no. for sure well copycat hey who copied who website. here well yeah exactly who's first well that's why i'm i kind of chuckle like the dot com goes to a dead website like it doesn't work so i don't know who bought the dot com and you know never did anything with it but we um, don't have time to do it here in the podcast but someone go look up in archive.org if the dot net or the dot org actually came out mm, first it'd there be curious you go. yeah it, we think dot net came out first and then the dot org he just showed that's ranking below them stole it but it could be the other way around which happens a lot it definitely more, could be you know <laughs> uh and then just uh, while i was searching this um i thought it was funny that a youtube result showed up in the serps for is it Friday? i think i was looking I, I i was looking up something about this like who started it or something and this youtube video shows up and i'm like who makes a YouTube video about a website? It's a one minute long website and it's only been viewed 41 times total uh, since it was uploaded a year ago. It's not a good video, right? It's a staticky, grainy video. Um, somebody not from the US with broken English. Basically, they walk through the website and they say, here's what the website does. And then they say, I don't know why it exists, but here it is. <laughs> I just think that's hilarious that somebody created a, a an entire video about this website. So it would have been really funny if this video had you know ten thousand views, <laughs> right? Um, so, anyways, this is one of the deep cuts um, on YouTube. Uh, so, I think I'm going to just pass the torch to you, Jared. Can you um, sa save the day here? Uh, well, unfortunately, your weird, weird yeah. the The problem on this one is that um, your website would be you know better if uh, I was here to save the day, but I'm not all that proud of my niche, uh, my, mm. uh, my weird niche this, 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 uh, this week. Now here's a saving grace on it is I feel a lot better about mine after seeing yours. So yeah, yeah, no, I agree. There's a lot more to look at on your website, Crazy. even though it is only a one page website, right? One page. That's one of the drawbacks that we're about to look at a one page website. So if you're, if you're looking for some really robust, well-built out weird niche, which we've had those in the past, this mm -hmm. is not it. I think last week I brought one that had 65,000 pages. This is not it. And the website is theofficestairmachine.com. Uh, a, a harken back to The Office, a very popular TV show that we all, well, we probably all didn't, but certainly yeah. I and all my friends loved. Oh, yeah. Love it. Absolutely, you know, championed the awkward uh, TV show experience. And so the office stare machine is someone, some poor sucker, apparently Joe Sabia, he's even hyperlinked to him. We, we should follow that down the road. Spent 1.5 years finding every single stare and worked with Aaron Rasmussen. I also don't know who he is to manually code each stare into over 800 different emotions in a complexly architect system. That's impressive. So it takes the 1,300 cultural references made in the office and places them in an interactive time machine. You type in basically what emotion you want, worried, happy, confused, surprised, and they just start stringing together clips from the office for you where they make those stairs. There's over, I guess there's 706 stairs. And if you watch all of them, there's a surprise video that awaits you. Did you get to see that surprise video yet, Jared? <sighs> what, do you, what do you think, Spencer? <laughs> I'm going to say no. No, I didn't didn't make it past him. There's some <laughs> good ones. I like the worried one. Worried's my favorite. Hit worried and let's see. I, I think we can do okay. it without the audio there. So I type in worried, hit go. <laughs> I 
and that was it. Oh no, it just keeps going. Oh, oh, it shows all the worried ones. All the worried. Oh wow. <laughs> And I don't know if the sound's coming through or not, but they're all pretty much silent anyway. I think so. it is coming through. Yeah, I think it is. Hey, why through. not? We'll keep the sound in there. Yeah, I um, like, um, what's the other one? Defeated. If you click on the defeated, that's it's in red there below the video. That's a good one. No, 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 keep going up. Uh, there, yeah, there you go, right there. Uh, okay. Defeated. I thought those were pretty good, too. <laughs> Damn it, Jim! <laughs> Who has so, time to go through to this, right? all all the office uh, and uh, put all these clips together? I mean, it's I, we might watch all seven hundred and six right here on the podcast. I was gonna say for office, it feels like something where if you're an office fan, you could sit there and kind of watch it and kind of relive it and kind of remember a lot of them. And if you're not an office fan, this is probably bizarre as ever. Uh, <laughs> we'll, t we'll talk some stats about the website because I, I I would okay. like to get some thoughts from you on it. Um, right. It is a dr thirty. So much better than your website. Um, although it's not getting uh, uh, your website ranked for more keywords. This only ranks for 38 keywords. Really? That's it. Oh, wow. You would think it'd pick up more keywords, don't you think? You would think. Um, but maybe nobody, nobody's searching for the office stare. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some ways to, to do this uh, we could talk about that I think it could actually get a decent amount of traffic because the, the office is a cult – a cult classic. It's an icon, right? And so it's 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 yeah. interesting that they're in many ways they have a lot going for them. But thirty eight keywords and two hundred or something search traffic from Ahrefs is just not doing it. Probably down to the fact that they only have one page. This is a classic one page website. And um, uh, something I thought was interesting though, Spencer, if you look in the upper right of the uh, of the web page, it has forty nine thousand likes on Facebook. I see that. Ooh, Facebook, right? Quite and the Dovetailing the off there. of uh, what you were talking about and the type of content you're posting, it's, I don't know, there's some interesting things here. Maybe enlighten us on what you think this could do better for, uh, is there a donkey in there? Uh, what this could do better <laughs> for, uh, for, for Facebook to get more traffic to the site. Yeah, no, I agree. And apparently I just liked the page. So um, <laughs> I, I'm going to have that following me around now. Um, <laughs> you did? I, yeah, I, you didn't actually go to it, did you? I, I did. No, I didn't. I just clicked the button. I thought it was going to open Facebook, but it didn't. Um, I, they could be sharing all kinds of uh, memes, right? On, <laughs> I think I need to hit pause on the video. I can't concentrate. Um, You've endured 31 stairs. you got a long ways to go. If you think you're going to uh, clock 706 on the podcast, you might not make it. Oh, it gives me the counter. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. We're at 31 out of 706. <laughs> But yeah, they, they could be sharing all kinds of memes on Facebook, um, quizzes, you know, about the office, of course, still shots, you know, from these videos. Uh, and of course, th the end goal is that they would have to take all of these memes or quizzes and put them on their website, you know, the individual uh, individual pages or articles so that they could share it on Facebook. So people have to click the link to take the quiz or look at the meme or like, surely, anyways, there are different ways you can do it, but they each, can get traffic. Each of these, uh, so on the screen, you clicked on defeated, right? And that was a tag of sorts, but that could just yeah. as easily be a page and could rank totally. for defeated, uh, you know, the office defeated expressions. And I don't know the search terms. I didn't do all that, but we, we see on this weird niche segment that, at this point, I feel like we can safely say there's search volume around all these various terms that are happening that they have on this page, but haven't done a good job building it out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this kind of feels like just a, they're obviously huge fans. They wanted to, they thought it'd be funny and it is to put together all these stairs, right? And categorize them, but that's, they did it once and they, you know, moved on with their lives is what it feels like. They're not really trying to grow it into something, but they probably could, um, it, would it be huge? Probably not. But it might be a fun website. I was trying to go and look into who Joe Sabia was, but I uh, apologize if I opened it and got a lot of uh, uh, audio there. Yeah, so it's clearly two guys that are happy to link to their their websites there on the homepage, but uh, they could do more. But I think you're right. Like I just think it was a passion project that got put up there. But fifty thousand ish likes on Facebook. I mean, if the if you need anything to kind of show you that there's interest, that that's that's a good metric. Yeah. Exactly. So definitely has the potential to like do well on Facebook, social media, 
um, if they wanted to grow the traffic or they could just leave it the way it is. And uh, it's kind of fun to check out, you know, share it with any of your huge office fans, have them go check out this website. Uh, <laughs> anyways, got ah, Toby. It's, it's fun. You know, you've got intrigued, you know, you've got <laughs> anyways, <laughs> I think I've intrigued you, Spencer, by this uh, this website. Here, yeah, I'm videos. enjoying it. It's a good good little website. Uh, so, all right. Um, well, we ended on a good. Uh, we ended on a good. Oh, what's their YouTube channel, by the way? Is that well, all? Yeah, off their was, YouTube channel. It is. Um, okay. So here we go. The Office Stair Machine only has 436 subscribers. Oh, dear. Um, no public content. That must all be unlisted or... Oh, you can't just look at all their videos. No, it's want. all unlisted or uh, what, private? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you can see this one video I clicked on. It's only been viewed 134 times. It was posted nine years ago. So not an incredibly so successful website it's, or video. It, yeah, it's unlisted and it's only three seconds. And so, again, yeah. they could actually string together all those clips... Unless there's mm -hmm. a copyright violation that I'm not aware of, you know, uh, which you know all about. Maybe that's a copyright problem. It could uh, be. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> low blow. Apologies. That's all right. I'm uh, but they're only three second clips. So I can see why I only got 436 views. Like it's only a three second video. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and you have to click on the right, you know, emotion and click on the stair machine. So, yeah. I, you know, Jared, I, this is a good find. This is okay. way better than mine. All this right. is way better than mine. So um, thanks for bringing it home, keeping the, the viewers around, keeping them happy. I think I think you did indeed save the day. So Okay, well, that one was well from, done. I, I'll give credit where credit's due, Caitlin, my business partner. Ah. Somehow she found it, and she's like, this is probably one you'd want to feature. I was like, oh, good that, find. That is a good fit. It didn't fits right into the it. weird weird niche segment for sure. It's so. good ad, so. But I think that does it. We'll wrap it up here. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening in to the Niche Pursuits podcast. We're covering, you know, the latest Google news and publishing news, um, our side hustles and the weird niche sites. We appreciate you all sticking around. It's not Friday for us, but maybe it's Friday for you. Uh, so thank you again for listening in. And if you want, go check Spencer's weird niche site to confirm whether today is Friday or not. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Just a final reminder that it was brought to you by Search Intelligence. And if you're looking for link building PR campaigns for your website, just head over to search-intelligence.co.uk and get in touch with them today. Cheers. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening to the Niche Pursuits podcast. I just wanted to remind you that if you are ready to start building smarter, faster, and easier internal links, you should check out Link Whisper. You can get $15 off Link Whisper when you use the coupon code PODCAST at checkout. Head over to linkwhisper.com and use the code PODCAST in order to save $15. Thanks again for listening.